Hey, it's Steve with InterrogantSpace.com and today what I'm going to do is a different kind of processing technique, getting away from the Hubble palette that uh, is very popular when you're in an aeroband. I'm going to be doing some bicolor imaging and that's where you take uh, hydrogen and oxygen and uh, combine only those two image sets to create bicolor image, red and blue. Uh, and then over my shoulder is kind of what we're going to be working on today which is the NGC 7000 North America. It's North America, not North American. That's what I used to call it, North American Nebula. No, it's the North America No End Nebula, NGC 7000. And this was shot with an 80 millimeter APO Mead triplet, uh, the ASI 1600 mm cool, uh, through the ZWO HA 7 nanometer and oxygen 7 nanometer filters about 10 hours of data combined, combined. So let's get over here to the dark side, the dark side, uh, pixel and sight. I'm gonna show you how to write a script in pixel map to combine those two data sets in the green channel to uh, get a pretty cool image result. So let's get over here to the computer. All right, here in uh, pixel and sight, um, one thing that I found that really helps is, is I'm repetitively using some of these tools up here. So if you come in here to process, you've got your, your kind of categories here and then your subcategories that pop up when you hover over them. And there's things like intensity transformation. I'm, I use curves transformation a lot, obviously histogram transformation, uh, I use the screen transfer function. So there's a lot of things that I use repetitively and a lot of times like uh, for instance over here in noise reduction in the multi-scale linear transform I've got a pretty standard setting that I use when it comes to these grayscale images for background noise reduction and instead of doing that each time uh, what I've done is I come over here to file and I'm going to load project and immediately it takes me to a main screen here where I have a project called blank pix project when I open that up, it loads all of you know the, the heavy hitters in this program for me that I use, including the screen transfer function. But if you come in here like into the multi-scale linear transform, see all my settings are already here. So I just need to apply it. I don't have to set that each time. So hopefully that helps you out for just a, a shortcut because the Lord knows we all need shortcuts. Don't take them, but you need them. So let's go over here to uh, file. Let's go grab our two data sets. All right, so here we are. See, I've already done some uh, SHO, but I'm gonna highlight and uh, hold the control key and get my oxygen and my hydrogen and not the sulfur and open that up. So let's go do a quick screen transfer function on the oxygen. So you got a pretty good signal <clears throat> with the oxygen here and we'll do a quick screen transfer function and I believe my hydrogen was yeah it's rotated uh, kind of funky so obviously we're gonna have to match those two up and in just a, a quick information the, these were stacked in deep sky stacker uh, using a single frame as a registration frame so they're basically star line they're not basically they are star lines so you don't have to star line them uh, but if you did not do that and you brought images in you want to star line pix and site does have a process for that uh, so the first thing you want to do is come in here process uh, we'll come in here to geometry dynamic crop so click the reset button you see it puts a, a box up around your image here so we're just going to move this this box in until we get the uh, crop Unfortunately, I didn't I didn't rotate my camera well. Uh, I didn't check rotation, <clears throat> so I'm quite a bit off. But to me, that's uh you know we're we're hitting the corners, so we're good. So we're not going to click the check mark with this dynamic crop. We're going to take this the information because this little box, all the information in this box is right here on this triangle. Now we're going to drag that off, and it's going to be called process one. And I like to save process one just in case I want to crop anything else the same way. 
or I accidentally screw something up and I need to um, bring a new image in, I've got that crop saved. So now we can close dynamic crop. Ooh, Lord, turn that down. A little loud. And now we just drag it over, drop it on the image. So my hydrogen is cropped. And we'll drag it over, drop it on the image for oxygen. And now our oxygen is cropped. Let's minimize that and put that over there. So I found uh, with combining this data, it's best to do a dynamic background extraction on each set. So if you were doing SHO and you had sulfur in here, you'd want to do a background extraction on each one. They're similar, but not quite. So it's best to do it on each one. <clears throat> but I also found that it's best to start out with the hydrogen setting your sample points because obviously why? Because it's got the most data in it. Um, so we're going to come over here to process, background modelization, and dynamic background extraction. And we'll click the reset button and that links the image to the tool. Let's drop down our sample generation here. Let's make that image just a little bit bigger for you guys in the cheap seats. Uh, so it kind of guesses once you connect that, it'll guess what the default sample radius is, but I found it very rarely guesses that correctly. Probably going to drop the number of samples per row down to eight. And right off the bat, I like to decrease the minimum sample weight to five. And I like to increase the tolerance to eight or 0.8. And then I like to come in here, just me. I like to make my samples yellow because yellow's, yellow's, yellow's easy to see. And then we're going to set the target image to division because I don't have a lot of gradients in my images. What I have mostly is uh, vignetting and division seems to work better on an image that has, you know, brighter corners and, and a darker center. Even though this hydrogen data looks really good, we're still going to use division. So let's click generate <clears throat> and we're going to zoom in here. First thing I want to do is I want to check and see if this default sample radius, if my box is a good size, meaning if it, it was out to here like this and taking up a lot of stars, that wouldn't be good. Uh, but the box seems to be a good size. And we probably have a few more sample points than we need. So let's move that down to six. And that's better. So now it's just the tedious part of moving these sample points um, into areas that are as dark as you can possibly find it. Meaning you don't want to set a sample point here. You know, you want to move that over and try to catch these little dark areas. And you're going to find, you know, a lot of times like these sample points are on the nebula themselves. Uh, if you can't find a really dark pocket in the nebula, just come up here and delete it and always got to click off into space here before it will reactivate your pan and I'm using the uh, space bar so scroll reel to scroll in and out hold the space bar down and it pans you around it took me forever to figure that out uh, so you see we got a, like a dark spot there you could move that sample point right about there I don't know why when I start recording my voice gets scratchy. Whatever. Maybe I'm supposed to just have a sexy voice when I'm doing this. So it's tedious and I'm not going to pause the videos. You're going to have to sit right here and watch me do this. Look at that. And you look. And the other thing you want to make sure is your sample points aren't on any stars. So See, I'm moving the sample point around. You can see the image it's projecting here. And if I move over that star, there's the star. So you don't want it on any stars. And some of the faint stuff in here, you can zoom in. You, know, you want to find the darkest places possible to put these sample points. And I want, always want to make sure, me personally, that I have a good selection of sample points all the way around the edge. Sometimes I feel like if I want to add a sample point, you can. You just click on it. See, I just clicked right there. You can put, you can put another one right there. 
and go crazy with it. All right, so we're just going through and we are checking all of our points and removing that out of the nebula. You see that? Move that over here. I'm gonna leave that one alone. We'll leave that one right there in the corner. We got one right here. Let's put it right there. Just like that. So sometimes you gotta zoom back out. <coughs> so I have learned if you hit the generate button in areas that have nebulosity, if they're super dark, like black, 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 that means you got a sample point there and you gotta go back and check it and delete that sample point or move it. Um, but for right now, this looks good. Now, I just pointed at you. There. Uh, right down here, remember these instances. So all these sample points, exactly where I placed them with their values are all on, all that information is on this triangle. So I can drag that off, drag it over here out of the, off to the side. And now we can click check mark. And let's see what we got. Hit the screen transfer function down here. So look, we got, we got an image with a lot of contrast. Got good dark skies in the back. You're gonna to have to close down dynamic crop. Yes. You hit this little double square button right down here on the bottom. And that's gonna size the image the same. Let's close out what it took out of here. Let's hit the double square and you can see the difference. Like mega different. Okay. So let's minimize that. So now that says HA underscore DBE, dynamic background extraction. Let's close the old one. Let's open up our oxygen. And remember we save the process. So all you gotta do is just double click on it. And it puts the exact same sample points all the way around. And this image is, uh, has got some pretty good detail. Sometimes you're gonna find though with the oxygen, you'll see these sample points up in here will be red. And, and it means basically to adjust your tolerance to be able to tolerate more of the contrast that it's in there. I think that's what it's doing. All I know is it's red. So if you increase this to like 1.8, all you gotta do is increase it. You don't need to regenerate it. You just, you know, we can show you here. Let's increase that to 1.8 and all you gotta do is like zoom in and out real quick. So let me see if I can get it to, let's just do one. All right, cool. So you see how we became less tolerant to our samples. Now you see I have all these sample points in red. Look at them all. They're not happy and they won't do crap. So we'll go back up here. We'll change this back to the point eight. And you just click, either click here in the field or zoom in one time or something just to reset it. Now you see how we have all green sample points and we're happy. So let's click the check mark. Hit the screen transfer function, see what it looks like. Much better. Much, much better. Minimize it. Let's push it over here. We're going to close down what is subtracted. We're going to get rid of dynamic background extraction tool. And we will close the old image. Okay. So the next thing to do is going to be to combine these two. And for that, we're going to use pixel math. And I don't have it here. Um, so we're going to have to go in here, process all the way down to pixel math, pixel math. Okay. Uh, this little drop down, the destination drop down. Let's do that first. So we want to create a new image and where it says color space here, we want to drop that down and do RGB. We are not going to use a single expression. We're going to use uh, all three channels. So we're going to turn that off and we're gonna go into our expression editor. And I got this formula from uh, Christopher Gomez, one of his videos, and it's definitely something that you can, it's a baseline uh, formula for combining the two data sets. Let me just show you how it works. So here in the red channel, we wanna assign the HA to the red channel, so we just double click. Let's go in here to the blue channel, and we wanna assign the oxygen to the blue channel, so double click. 
and the green channel, here's where you got to write a formula. And here's the formula. So you're going to do uh, open parentheses, uh, double click on your HA, that sets the HA, and you're going to do times. And I'm having to look over my microphone. <laughs> and you're going to do point. Um, I like to do 05. And then you're going to close parentheses plus because you're going to add it to it. Open parentheses, the oxygen times. And I have no idea what the little squiggly mark is, but it's like the infinity sign. Only half the infinity. It's only halfway there. And then close parentheses. And now that you have that set, we can push this over here. And you want to have one of the images. Oops, I got to click OK. Sorry. Click OK to that. So now there's our expression editor. There's our HA in the red channel, our formula to combine the HA and the oxygen in the green channel, and then our oxygen in the blue channel. And let's move it over here to the side. And you got to have one of the data sets open for this. And then you're going to hit the square little apply button. And the cool thing about it is it failed. Let's go back in here to the expression editor. Why did it fail? Because we didn't give it a percentage. 0.01. So here's the formula. HA uh, times 0 0.05 plus 0 0.03 uh, times and then infinity sign 0 0.01. If you want to check that, it says OK. You can parse it down here. So click that OK and then click the square button. All right, so here's our new image. And let's do an unlinked screen transfer function on it. And so you see how I've got, I've got a fair amount of blue. I've got some red, but it's not bright red. You see, I've almost got, it's almost like a lighter red. So we can leave that open. And we can go back over here to our expression editor and we can change that right here in the uh, pixel math screen. Let's change that to uh, 0.8 and let's hit it again. And that's the cool thing. You can just keep running these over and over until you get a color balance that you like. So let's do an unlinked screen transfer. So see now it's starting to lighten up. I'll show you the, I'll show you the difference here though. We can close that down. And we can go to point one and hit it. And screen transfer function. Now you can definitely see the difference. See, I've got more orange tone in here, and this is a deeper red tone. I really like to introduce a little orange, so I think I'm going to leave this uh, set here to point five and the oxygen at point 0.1. So I'm going to close down pixel math. Here's my new image. There's my HA. Don't want to get rid of it. Very important. All right, so here's our new image. You can definitely tell we've got some good oxygen signal in here. We've got good uh, hydrogen signal in here. It's a bit noisy, but we will clean that up. It is still in a linear state. If you hit F12, it kills it. So we can come in here and hit the screen transfer function one more time, open up our histogram transformation, move that data up there. It does not change your curve, only does that in a grayscale image. But let's hit F12 again. That kills the temporary screen transfer function. We're gonna move that data over, drop it right on the image. And now we're stretched. <clears throat> Cool. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to create some color masks, uh, just some simple ones, probably a blue one and a red one and a luminance. So this uh, little rainbow colored box up here with the grayscale box that says extract C E or C I L component. Click it. It's going to give me a, a luminance image. And what I want to do here is open up my histogram transformation and click this little circle right here to get a real time preview of that because I'm gonna create a little more contrast. Click the check mark, it gives you a histogram peak. And we're gonna bring this the black slider over. God. And bring the midtone slider up. Black slider over. See, it gives me a little more contrast for my mask, because this is a mask, that's all it is. 
and click the square button to apply that. Click this to reset it. Close our real-time preview. We're gonna minimize our histogram transformation. And here's our mask. Okay, we're not gonna use it yet. We're gonna push it over here and we can right click and say set image identifier. Let's click on that. And we're just gonna call this loom. Click OK. So now what I want to do is I want to create two color masks, uh, like a, a red and a blue, to really attack the variations in this image here. Uh, and the way you do that is you come up here to Script, come down here to Utilities, and in your drop-down list we have a thing called Color Mask here. And um, let's click uh, Red, and we're going to blur that mask by three, and click OK. All right, so here's our red mask. You can minimize it. Let's move it over here. Right click on it. Set image identifier. And we're gonna name that red. Click OK. And what's our next one? Let's come in here to script, utilities, color mask. Let's go blue. Blur that. And that's funny, it didn't even grab any of the image here. It just kind of grabbed around the image, but that's fine. So let's uh, set image identifier, change the name to blue. So all we're doing now, the reason we're creating these color masks is we really just want to enhance uh, the detail and the color in this image, create more contrast, more, we want to brighten the image out. We want to see the detail more. Um, so first thing we want to do is probably try to kill some of this background uh, color that we have in here that we don't we need that needs to be you know a darker space so let's apply our luminance mask and by default when you apply these masks they basically mask the darker areas uh, if you want to protect the darker areas uh, that's what they set the default if you want to mess with the darker areas then you have to invert it so you can see basically this image is red here um, if you right click on the image and go to mask, you get some mask uh, selections here. Uh, you can say show mask and turn it completely off. It's still there because our tab is orange. Uh, but you come in here to mask, invert mask, mask, show mask. And you can see now what's in red is the nebula and the stars. And what's darker here is the sky. And that's the background space and that's what we want to uh, take some of the color out of so let's come back in here to mask show mask and we're going to use our next tool here is a curves transformation so open it up let's click a real-time preview and then just in the rgb channels we just want to grab it and drop that space down just a little bit that's all we're going to do and we can desaturate it just a little bit and then we want to apply that, click reset. So you leave this open, you can close your real-time preview. So let's grab our red, open it up, and we're gonna move the red uh, tag here and drop it on that ribbon to apply that red mask. Open up the uh, curve transformation real-time preview here. And let's brighten it. Let's come up here on the high end of the RGB, see how it brightens the image. Get a little color. We can boost some of the red here if we want. And we can boost a little bit of the lightness. It's just really gonna brighten it up. And this uh, C component, if you push it up, it's really gonna add some saturation to your image on the, on the reds and yellows. So this little circle over here, we can click at it on and off. You see the changes that we've made really starting to brighten some of this area up down here, which is cool. So let's apply that. And one thing we could do to kind of get some of the blue, you can see it's actually applied it twice, so let's reset it. So one thing we can do to kind of enhance some of this blue area, some of this oxygen that's strong in this image here is uh, close out our real-time preview and come down here to mask and go invert mask. Let's open that back up. and. See what I've done there. 
almost kind of attacked the whole image, but that's fine because I can reapply that loom mask and then and then darken up this background. Um, add, we added just a little bit of blue and a little bit of, of uh, lightness to it. So let's look at the difference. And sometimes it does that. See the difference. So let's close that down. We'll apply it. So now that's kind of give us a blue cast over our image. That's fine. Because we can come back in here and reapply the luminance. Open up real time preview. Uh, hold on. We got to, let's show our mask and see what we're protecting. So see how we're, the red is over the darker areas and the stars are showing through. It's not what we want. We want to go mask, invert mask, because we want to take that blue color out of the background. So mask, uh, show mask. Click the real time preview. It's my dog, Frankie. somebody rang the doorbell <sighs> all right so let's close our real-time preview and we got a pretty good looking image here let's do this let's uh, take that mask and let's invert it back let's show what we have meaning the backgrounds protected the bright spots aren't they can receive manipulation so come in here to mask show mask let's do real-time preview and let's put a Really brighten this image up. Look at that. And put a little S curve in it to give ourselves just a little contrast. Let's add just a little bit of lightness to it. I like it. It's a little pink, but we'll get there. Really good data makes this a whole lot easier. And this is some pretty good data. <laughs> uh, so let's uh, invert that mask again because we're really just trying to work on the uh, contrast and let's desaturate that background let's pull some of the lightness down just a little bit click OK uh, let's come in here to script utilities uh, uh, color mask let's check the magenta Could be picking up some of that magenta which we can turn over to blue if we can just mask it if not we'll just keep uh, adjusting the luminance mask until we get an image that we like wow look at that there's the magenta i found it i found it uh, so let's minimize that let's rename it so we know what it is magenta uh, magenta Kind of hard to type over a microphone. Uh, so let's apply that mask and come in here to our curve transformation, do a real time preview. And let's push our blue up. And let's pull some of that red out. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's increase that lightness. Look at that. Look at the detail in there. Let's pull it down. We're on the uh, RGB. We're, we're doing it now. Increase a little of the lightness. Now this B component over here, if you pull it down, see the blue that you just got in there? Awesome. Let's apply that. I'm digging it. It's almost like it took over, didn't it? Let's invert that mask. It. Do another real time preview. And let's just bring down, bring in some more contrast right there. Cool. And we'll close the real time preview. We're going to bring in our red mask again because we almost kind of lost a little bit of our red. We got so much blue in there now. It's a balance. Real time preview. Brighten that up right there. Apply some red to it. The lightness really helps. 
Something like that. You really see the red popping up down in here. And we'll push that C component up. Transparency. I was talking with somebody the other day on Facebook about transparency. That really makes your image, you know, when, uh, especially shooting mono really helps that. Um, because, you know, I shot so much with a DSLR and everything was just blotchy and, and solid and you couldn't see through some of these areas and see some of these wispy little faint details in here. Um, let's minimize that. Let's apply that, uh, where did it go? Where'd you go? You're hiding from me. Let's apply that magenta mask one more time. I think we got a little carried away with that magenta mask. Let's do real time preview. And we're just gonna bring that RGB down. Get a little bright on me. Let's push the blue up just a little bit. Let's grab it right here. It's like a little purple. Purpley, purpley. Let's take some of the red out and click OK to that. Uh, with any of these images that you do in narrowband, well, reset. <laughs> uh, you're going to find that you can't just come in here. We can. But to really get a good quality image, you really need to apply a luminance layer back over all this work. So we've done a bunch of work here, but if you zoom in and you see We've got some really cool color in here, but you see how it's kind of splotchy. Looks like blood splatter. I mean, we've got great detail in here, um, but you can see it's it's really pixelated. And we want to smooth that out, and we don't want to smooth that out with applying a ton of noise reduction to it at all. Um, so what we want to do is we want to apply a luminance layer. So I'm going to call for the sake of this video, you saw how we mixed the two channels. You've seen now what we've done to color mask and, and kind of selectively enhance some of the color in here. Uh, I'm going to come in here to mask and remove the mask. So this is a clean image. I'm going to minimize it and right click on it, set image identifier. I'm just going to call this HOO because it's not an HA HOO yet. Click that. We're going to move that down here. So let's open up our HA layer. That's our strongest signal that we received. And we're gonna grab the tab here, bring it off, and it creates a clone. I like doing that just in case something screws up. I know I always have this one in the wings. So it's, it's an exact copy, it's a clone. And this one is gonna receive some noise reduction. So you remember, I already have the settings, but here's a weird thing, ready? Let's make another copy. <laughs> it's because this one is still not stretched, right? So if I click on it, I hit F12, it gets dark. Okay, so this is our clone clone, attack of the clones. Uh, let's hit F12 to kill it. Make sure we hit the screen transfer. Remember histogram transformation, bring it up. Let's move that data up here, drag it on the bottom ribbon. You see, because it's grayscale, you see my curve automatically applied. Hit F12 to kill the uh, screen transfer function and then move that data over and drop it. And now it's stretched. If we hit reset, there's our, there's our histogram peak. This is stretched. Um, and once again, I wanna come in here to a real-time preview. I wanna add just a little more contrast to get a little darker background, a little brighter nebula, like that because this is a mask and you want a good you want a good contrast you don't want it real harsh because you want some feathering between the two but you do want to brighten up your highlights here and darken up your background so uh, you can get that mask applied the contrast that mask applied well, the best you can so let's hit uh, hit apply to that hit reset and close the real-time preview and so let's move that mask over and apply it to our hydrogen alpha image. And we want to do noise reduction. We want to apply that to the background of the image. And so we don't want to protect the background. So let's come in here and right click, mask, and invert. And then just so we're not seeing a red image, let's go to mask and show mask. 
Uh, so let's come in here and just grab a, a little preview window. Let's drag it right here where we can see some of the nebulosity, but a lot of the background. Click on our preview. So we've got a pretty good image here. It's not a lot of noise, but we're going to apply some noise reduction to it. So multi-scale linear transform. We've, uh, we're in our noise reduction tab. And if you want to pause the video and check out these settings, these are the settings I use. It's basically the strongest noise reductions on layer one uh, with it decreasing into layer four. So I'm not going to go through each one of those settings, but here it is here. If you want to pause the video and uh, write them down. So we're just going to apply it. Remember, we've got our mask. So we're, we're basically protecting this nebulosity and the background is going to receive this noise reduction. <laughs> Who's texting me? Okay. Ooh, wow. Look at that. Uh, so to see the differences, we want to hit the control shift and the Z or Z, wherever you're from. So let's scroll in here. Can you see it? Can you see it? Like magic. Magic. My stars are terrible though. Look at that. But look, but we're really not affecting this up here. So we haven't done anything to the image. We've only uh, affected the preview. This is just a preview to see if we like it. So if we do like it, we come back to the main image and then we just click apply. And we wait just a skosh. And it does its little thing down here. And we're done. So let's minimize it. So our image is still in the linear state. It has a uh, noise reduction applied to it. So let's uh, let's get it out of the linear state. Let's stretch it. And I like this stretch. I'm not going to manually stretch it. Now, uh, RGB images, definitely want to manually stretch those. But uh, narrowband stuff, if you've got some good time on it, Pixinsight does a wonderful job, job, uh, job stretching it. So let's uh, delete our preview screen. Let's go in here to mask and remove the mask, click F12, just to reset it, apply the screen transfer, remember, open up the histogram transformation, move the data up, watch it curve, F12 to kill it, and then apply that data. All right, and before I do anything else, I wanna sharpen this image up just a little bit. And for that, I use deconvolution. And no, I don't use deconvolution like going through and picking out stars and doing a, a, a point spread function on everyone and going through all those iterations and de-ringing. Uh -uh, I don't do that. Uh, I do it down and dirty. Uh, so we want to bring up our mask here again because we don't want to do any sharpening on the, the lower signal areas. Let's apply that mask. Boop. Let's check our mask. Always got to double check, uh, show mask. So see now our background is protected, our highlights aren't. Uh, so let's come back in here, right click and go show mask. And we're gonna create another preview window. I like to create one that's kinda, kinda long. I like to move it around. I like to get a lot in there if I can. Especially this area right in here really needs some good detail, some sharpening done on it. So right there, and we're going to bring up deconvolution. And by f default, the wavelet regularization, regularize, right? I think I put too many L's in there. But that's not hard to do with these names. Uh, we're going to turn all that off. We're going to leave it on parametric point squid, point square, point squid, <laughs> point squid function. Yeah, that's it, the point squid function point spread function and it's really default it really is uh, and let's just drag and drop and see what we like so look at that can you tell let's do control alt z look it's subtle but it sharpened up all our stars we don't have any ugly ringing we've got uh that's applied or off on you can definitely see it in the stars uh, so I like it. It's subtle, but it definitely sharpens the image up. So let's drag that over. We're going to apply that to the whole image. Because this is our sharpness. This is our details. This is uh, 
you know, where we're going to get our sharp focus on our image. Uh, doing it this method. So let's delete the preview. Let's remove the mask. Bye bye. Close down deconvolution. This has uh, been stretched, remember. Let's minimize it. And we can just push it over here is HADVE clone. And we know that's going to be our luminance. So let's bring our HOO image back up. I got too much blue in there. Man, I got too much blue in there. Watch what I'm going to do here. I got a little too much blue in there. Let me say it one more time. No, you don't. Uh, let's go mask, show mask, mask, invert mask. And I want to kill some of this blue out of here. Not, not with convolution, with curves transformation. Let's just bring that blue down. There. See, two blue. But we still got our nice blue and red in here. So to apply that. It's thunder out there. Did you hear it? Of course there's thunder on a night when it's supposed to be clear. And I have plans to image. Okay. So this is a better looking image. Let's take our mask off of there. Right click, remove mask. Uh, so we did all this work. We got these nice looking stars here. We did everything right. Now we're gonna do is we're gonna mess it up. We're gonna come over here to convolution. And convolution is, uh, I the people use, find these tools a whole slew of ways, but I just come in here to process and go to these these uh, master categories and then I see their subcategories. So here's convolution right here. Anyway, what convolution is going to do is it's going to blur this image. So all of this color is now going to blur together. But of course, it's going to be a blurry image. But we're going to apply that luminance layer over it. So the standard deviation tab, we're going to slide that over. Oh, sorry. Click the circle for a real time preview. Almost full. See the difference? So now if we come, well, we can't zoom in on real time preview, but we blended everything together, which is basically like a noise reduction application. So let's apply that, that uh, blurring effect. All right. Minimize it, kill the real time preview. So here's our image. And now if you look, you know, we've got transition between colors. It's not pixelated. Yeah, it's blurry, but guess what? We're going to apply all our details with our luminance layer. How do we do that? We do that with LRGB combination. Where do we find that? We come in here to processes and color space. That's where your color space is where you're combining channels. You're combining uh, images to make a certain color. So right here, LRGB combination. So let's open it up. Uh, let's reset it. Make sure you always reset. We're going to take this uh, HADBE clone that we did so much work on and drop it. Drag and drop. You can also find it by going in here and clicking on the menu and we'll find it here. But guess what? I'm a drag and drop kind of guy. So drag and drop, make sure we got it. We're going to turn off our red, green, and blue. And we are going to apply chrominance noise reduction. Uh, we're going to leave it uh, set at default. And then we're going to take all of that data, which would be this, everything in here is now all filtered down to our little triangle, our instance drag it and put it on top of the image and we wait <clears throat> I'm wearing my Dunder Mifflin shirt today my son got it for me it's small but it makes my muscles look bigger <laughs> all right so if you see what's going on down here uh, we are now applying the LRGB chrominance noise reduction to the image all right cool so it takes a little bit and you're looking at this and you're like eh. yeah all right uh, so let's come in here. We're going to create another luminance mask, brand new one. Here it is here. And we're not going to do anything to it. We're just going to reapply it. Okay. Minimize it, push it down here. So we got it. Let's open up our curves transformation, real time preview, RGB. <coughs> 
And so now with this image, is it, it looks kind of hazy because we've applied that HA over it. But if we brighten it up in the RGB and then add a little bit of S curve to it and pretty much mimic that same S curve with our lightness, we get a pretty awesome image. See that right there? Apply. Bam. What it's saying is we could almost do that again. So let's do that one more time. Bring it up. Put a little S curve in it. Look at that. It's nasty. Wow. Looks like we might be able to do that one more time. Let's do our lightness this time. Bring it up. Pull it down. And let's add some saturation. Watch that image. Awesome. Awesome. So. Now we have an image that looks like we flew out into space and took a photograph of it. I mean, look at the details in here. Right? 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 So let's, uh, let's add a little saturation to our red channel, or our red mask, not channel. Uh, let's grab our red mask here, apply it, and come in here to our curve transformation, do real time preview. Let's just boost that red just a little bit. And we can pull the blue out of it. And let's take that C component and boost it up like right there. And then our lightness will right in there. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, so we got a pretty close to being done image. But one other thing I like to do is take my more aggressive. You see how I've got this luminance image here is a little more aggressive. This was the one that we created right off the bat that had nothing when we got actually we created it right after we did our uh, luminance application. But this one is, has a little more contrast. I like to apply that one so I don't delete them. And I'm gonna do a little preview window right in this area here because this area has all the sick, nasty detail in it. I'm gonna use another tool that can be found in process, intensity transformation, and it's gonna be called local histogram equalization. What are these names? Let's open it up. And I want to change that to a 12 bit. And I'm probably going to increase the amount just a little bit more. I already have, see, these, my settings were already here. Uh, these were the settings that I had before. Uh, typically, with default, let's just hit the default settings. See how your amount's maxed out. Your kernel radius is really low. So let's change it back to 12 bit. Let's get somewhere up just over 200 and just bring that amount down about 50%. And then let's apply it see what she does so let's do control alt Z you can see what it does highlights the highlights low lights the low lights that's uh that's pretty cool so let's click on our image and click apply Friday's gonna be clear okay all right that took forever. Uh, okay, so we just go to the back button here. You can see what it does. It's a great tool, great tool. Uh, so the only other thing I think I'm gonna do this image is a little star reduction. And we have a star mask. Let's click it and processes. It's in mask generation and star mask. So this is another uh, bunch of settings here that I have spent 
countless hours working on trying to create a star mask uh, for and I found this to be the best yeah so if you want to pause and, and maybe write jot down these settings um, the only thing that I'm going to change here is I do have some bigger stars so I'm going to move my scale up to 11 and uh, yeah apply because man let me tell you I have created some nasty star masks lots of them and obviously again this takes a little while but not as long as in the last process All right, so we're getting close. It's at 99%. Okay, so here's our star mask. And what you can do once you've created your star mask is click these two uh, kind of reset buttons here. And just click it again, because you messed it up. And you just kind of slide it over. You can actually see we picked up a little bit of the nebulosity, which isn't the end of the world, but it looks like our star mask is a little, uh, Light. It's a little light. We got quite a few, quite a few. Or we didn't get all. We didn't get. We didn't get all the stars. We didn't get as many stars as I want. So let's delete it. Let's remove that other mask that we had. That might help some too. You never know. Remove mask. Let's kill this preview. And we're gonna move this uh, threshold noise threshold down. The higher you move it, the less stars you're going to get. So we had it about 3.5. Let's move it down to like 2.9. Increase our scale one time because this big star here looked like the mask wasn't uh, covering it very well. And let's apply it again. Drag it and drop. So you can see what that did. It actually got a little bit of the nebulosity, but I don't think it's going to affect it too much. Um, like I said, these star masks are a pain. We got a little bit, and it'll reduce that some, but not enough that we're gonna worry too much about it. But we got a really good star mask. You can see uh, if we go one, two, three, four, five, and come on this image, one, two, three, four, five. I'm just doing my little mouse wheel and apply it. See, we got a pretty good star mask. Uh, okay, cool. So I could probably clone stamp out some of that nebulosity, but for the video, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna apply that mask. And I'm gonna minimize the star mask and come in here to another tool called Morphological Transformation. And I have it set uh, the size to seven. I think I've got it set on a circumference here or like a circle instead of a triangle. And so let's just apply it. And it's going to give us, see, it gave us just a slight star reduction. Oops. Man, it's subtle, but it's just enough. It's good. And the other thing we can do here while we have that is, you notice we have some stars here that have probably a little too much blue around them. And then we've got some stars in here that uh, have some yellow. We want to probably enhance those because those look really cool. So we can pull up our curves transformation because if we come in here and do our right click and go mask and show mask, you can see we're just basically showing the stars. Uh, so mask. Uh, show mask again, and we can just take the C component and just push it up. And that's just going to enhance some of that yellow and some of those stars. And we're going to take uh, the blue here and just pull it down a little bit. Get some of, the, some of that turquoise blue out of our stars. Get them a little more closer to white. Because this is narrow band, I didn't shoot RGB stars. This is kind of what you got to do. Uh, and then let's go apply to that. And reset. And I like it. So look, we've got some really good detail. We can do one more little tool here. 
let's uh, right click and say remove mask and it's a script we can run under utilities and it's called uh, dark structured enhancement and I like to push that down to a point three click OK let that let it do its thing that's kind of the cool thing about Pixinsight. sight there's a lot of things it just does and you just see if you like it and if you don't like it you just adjust the values until you do um, it's not as organic I think as uh, Photoshop is so that's actually why I still like to use both programs. I do. I do. This thing's really taking its time. All right. It's done. So you can see, let's just do the uh, before, before, after, before. Right, let's zoom in. After. Pretty cool, huh? Just went through here and picked up all these little darker, dark nebula structures and enhanced them. So, once again, you know, these processing tutorial videos are. Uh, or just that, or just to, just to take an image and process it to show you the steps. Uh, there's a whole lot more I could do to this image and I, you know, I'd move over into Photoshop and really do some detail enhancement on it. Uh, sounds like I'm processing in a Chinese kitchen right now because somebody's doing the dishes. Anyway, so, uh, so yeah, we took the two data sets, we combined them in by color and I can hear it. Can you hear it? I can hear it. Uh, and I got thunder. It's like, whatever, man. We're just doing this. We're just doing this. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I think that's about it. That's all I'm going to do here on Pix and Sight. We got a really incredible image here. I really love the color. Uh, like I said, there's a lot more that can probably be done to it, fine tuning it, but I'll leave that to you. So, uh, in the meantime, clear skies and clear minds. Chinese kitchen.